Hey, good day everybody. I hope you're going well. I'm Drew Agnew and cheers for checking out a Drew story. This episode, I sit down with my beautiful wife, Chantel, and it was really nice to get the opportunity to do some podcasting with her because usually it's, uh, you know, with like some friends of mine or random guests or even by myself. So having her to get the opportunity to come into this little podcast room and have a discussion with me, it was a lot of fun. So I hope we get to do it uh, do it a lot more going into the future. But uh, she was a little bit shy because, you know, this, this is a, a bit more of a personal topic, but... Uh, we talk about our journey through pregnancy and what it was like on the lead up to our beautiful baby boy, Lucas, and all of that. Uh, this is uh, something that I'm very happy to have in you know, the, the podcast episode library here in the Drew Story. You know, just really cap- capture uh, you know some moments in my life, whether it was sadder moments like last episode with uh, the dogs or um, you know the lead up to our beautiful son, who I'm very, very much in love with. But uh, we'll talk about... Uh, the post, what happened after this conversation uh, towards the end of the show um, once the conversation's over because this conversation was recorded uh, the night before everything went down, which is, uh, you know, it's funny to uh, look back at this and sort of uh, hear what uh, what our mindset was like before being parents and all of that. This was our last moment <laughs> before it happened, which is a uh, very, very very cool to listen back especially for um for me and Chantel but without further ado guys this is my wife Chantel as we discuss uh our pregnancy <laughs> Without further ado, Chantel, welcome to a Drew story. Thank you. Happy to be here. <laughs> You're thrilled, aren't you? You're like, well, you like the idea of doing a podcast, but I think you know, it's like it's like anyone. I, I'd be nervous too in front of a microphone if I didn't do it that much yep. or at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's a bit intimidating, that's for sure. Yeah, I mean, like during isolation and all that i've got two microphones here set up so i need someone so i've got to uh, get my wife to come in to talk to me (laughs) i've got no one else bryce or one of my other friends can come over at the moment yeah sorry about that that's that's all right it's his it's his fault he has has a life doing other things instead of just hibernating with us i don't know that'd be a bit weird though wouldn't it having someone else come in yeah yeah we don't exactly have the room now yeah i'll get sick of him and yeah you know (laughs) So for everyone out there, this is Chantel. She is my wife. You know, I love her very much. Do you love me, Chantel? Of course. Well, that's good. <laughs> and uh, she's uh, very heavily pregnant at the moment. We could literally run off any time during this episode recording and uh, run to the hospital and have our son. Yeah, I'd, so. I don't think I'd be running very fast. <laughs> no, you, you, you'll be waddling out the house, I reckon. Yeah, I'm sure we get a few hours notice. <laughs> Before we had to do any, yeah, well, yeah, <laughs> it's like we're we're watching a Chicago fire at the moment, and someone is just like, oh god, oh, I'm going to give birth, and they go off in the fire truck and literally have it within like 15 minutes. So wow, that that'll be good. It might, that might be a bit too quick. Yeah, yeah, those contractions would surely be very intense. <laughs> mm. I don't think it starts off quite that bad in most cases. Yeah, but I don't know yet, so. I'm sure I'll find out soon enough. I'm sure you will. I'm sure, <laughs> I'm sure I will too. Well, not physically, but through what you're showing. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I think the the thing I want to get most out of this conversation is like I'm going to put it up on the uh, a Drew Story podcast feed. Anyone who listens to it, be interested in listening. You know, they might get enjoyment out of it. But what what I I just want it sort of be to be there for eventually whenever our son would want to listen to it. It was like a, it's a bit of a touchstone for like from when he's just ready to pop incubating. <laughs> because I think that'd be a really cool thing. Like, you know, at, like our parents, we see old pictures of them or whatever. But now just like with the technology we have, whether it's just, you know, your, our phones in our pockets for video and photos. And through, I've got a real passion for podcasting. So I think it'd be really interesting to at least have that, 
have it there. I'm sure he'll look back at these podcasts and be like, you know, this is some dumb shit Drew's or dad's into <laughs> and he, he probably won't care. Similar to what, uh, you know, a lot of us, you know, probably went through with our parents. Like, oh, yeah, no, dad's into his cars, but, you know, you might appreciate it when you get older, but maybe not so much now. But I think it would be a cool thing to have, you know, mum and dad sort of sitting down talking about uh, – what what bringing we bringing him into the world? <laughs> yeah, what what we think is going to happen? Maybe our uh, you know experience sort of waiting for it to happen and sort of the journey as it's gone. But um, you know, everyone's journey is different. But I think <laughs> I think ours might be in some ways very positive and straightforward, but in other ways for you very uncomfortable and not so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> and no. Now we're at the end of it. <laughs> You're sort of just sort of at your wits end waiting for it to pop out. So, um, son, if you're listening in the future, many years in the future, you you were a pain in the ass, mate. You, your mum was just <laughs> waiting for her to – or waiting for you to just pop out and I um, don't know. By the time this is up, I – God, I hope. <laughs> <laughs> I hope you're there. Yeah. Yeah. So, I guess uh, let's, you know, it's been a pretty big 12 months really for us. You know, we got married and – Pretty quick turnaround to, uh, you know, getting pregnant and going through all this. So, you know. That's right. It didn't take very long for us to, you know, have a successful start to a pregnancy and then it was all go from there. So Yeah. I mean, like, you know, we're very thankful that, you know, only, uh, I guess, a couple of months it all sort of fell into place. Yeah, absolutely. Like I, I was... Stressing out a little bit that I was going to have some troubles and stuff. Um, but, you know, we, we didn't have any of those troubles and, um, yeah. yeah. It's a very wanted pregnancy, so. <laughs> yeah, like, yeah, we're, we're ready for, for kids. Chantel's been sort of wanting it for a couple of years and I always had in my head, uh, I was quite ready towards the end of my 20s. You know, not too young. But not not like an old man either. <laughs> like my parents, they had me when they were about well, when mum was thirty six. So you know that's you know that's pushing it. Yeah. <laughs> and like you know they're in their early sixties now, and you know I wouldn't want them too much older in my in my twenties. You know, so I, I want to be nice and active when when our sons. Yeah, you got to be able to keep yeah. up. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Try and keep up. Um, yeah. <laughs> See, I am the same age as my mum was when she had me. So okay, yeah, yeah, twenty five and a bit. Because mm, that's right, your mum got married really young, but engaged at seventeen and married at twenty one. So she missed out on some of the best birthday parties. But <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, I couldn't imagine being <laughs> like. You think back to when you're seventeen years old. What would you be like being engaged? Having that type of uh, com- uh, like commitment and sort of you know life altering thing experience. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think I was still figuring it out. You know, I met you when I was seventeen, and we got together when I was eighteen. Um, I did not um, propose to you though. No, yeah. no. Actually, Mum proposed to Dad first. And then he said no. Yeah. It's like, <laughs> it's like woman, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, and then, yeah, a little while later, I'm assuming, he proposed to her and, you know, then made her wait for the wedding and then made her wait for the kids and, yeah. And <laughs> so, and you made me wait a fair bit for engagement and all that. I did. How many years did I uh, were we in a relationship for? So, so it was our five year anniversary that you yeah. popped the question. Hey, I think five years is a, a. I think personally, that's a good time. That's why I did it, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I didn't really have much of a say, yeah. obviously. <laughs> yeah. All relationships are different, but I think, you know, I, I don't know, in my head, I always had like a bit of a timeline. Which, you know, I had it for the kids, had it for engagement, and all of that. So, sorry if it was a bit longer than you would have liked. <laughs> we got there though. Yeah, I think that's probably one of my the downsides to being so driven, I guess, is that, you know, when I want something, I want it now. Mm. And I, um, I can be a bit impatient. So Yeah, you're pretty impatient. Like if you, if you know <laughs> I've got you something for 
Christmas or whatever it is. You got to know what it is. You like I don't like surprises. Oh, I hate surprises. Oh. Yeah. I think a surprise <laughs> is good as long as you don't, you don't know that it's coming. Exactly. And yeah. Christmas and birthdays, you know, it's it's locked in. You know it's coming. Yeah, it's not really a surprise, so don't try and make it one. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> don't try. That's a threat, everyone. <laughs> Uh, so our, our um, I guess, major wait, but our, our wedding last year in March, was it worth it? Oh, absolutely. It was perfect. Um, you know, like some people might already know that we, or well, I planned three different weddings. <laughs> um, mm, and Thank you, COVID. Thank you. Yes. Yes. Thanks, COVID. So we had a last minute decision to have a little wedding ceremony at our engagement party um, that fell through basically the week of because COVID hit Australia then and, you know, lockdowns happened the week of and everything turned to shit. So um, Mm -hmm. that all got cancelled. We even had to go to the the court um, to try and plead our case to get (laughs) we did too (laughs) yeah like a shortening of time because we didn't leave ourselves enough notice that's a lifetime ago yeah so we (laughs) we had to go to the court to sort of speed things up to try and get this uh surprise yeah approval to be married (laughs) yeah because what's the amount of time that you usually have to have six weeks or something was it we Uh, we wanted it in like a month or three weeks yeah i think it was yeah a month to six weeks and I was like, oh, let's get married in three weeks. <laughs> yeah, that's, that was a weird experience because, you know, I don't – I never hang around courthouses <laughs> or anything like that. <laughs> so going in there and the guy's like, so, you, you know, you guys – you pretty much just went, you guys are all good. So, yeah, no, we're all right. So, yeah, I'll sign this piece of paper. Yep, yep. No, it was <laughs> – <So, laughs> And we are pretty happy when, uh, you know, that got approved. I think it's a pretty kind of nothing kind of procedure as far as – the law and all that, guys. I've got no idea. Yeah, I think you know, I I had to do a bit of chasing and do up a little bit of a, a grid to say how much money we'd spent and all the things we'd organised to have this wedding go ahead and to prove that we didn't really know what the process was um, before it was too late. So, yeah, as as soon as you know, he realised. Well, it was just an honest mistake and they've already got everything organised. He's like, why the hell not? And gave us the all clear and, yeah, so that was wedding number one. (laughs) And then uh, wedding number two was supposed to be a lot later this year. Um, Well, last year. Yeah, yeah, actually last year. Shit, it's 2022 now, isn't it? Yeah, no, that that, (laughs) that feels like a lifetime ago, doesn't it? Yeah. Going to the courthouse, I kind of... I kind of forgot about it really. That was just um, – that was another reality really where that that could have happened where we got married early in 2020. Yeah. Yeah. But then we ch- – like Chantel was about to say, we changed it to kind of a, a more upmarket venue to like, a, you know, it was a bigger thing. Chantel was like, oh, you know what? I actually do want a, you know, a proper wedding with like all our family and friends there and, um, you know, it was going to cost a lot more. It was going to be later in the year because, you know, we thought COVID might have eased down by then. Yeah. Spoiler alert for us, it didn't, and we're pretty thankful that we didn't end up doing that. Yeah. No, I Um, think even if we had kept to that timeline, we probably still might have been okay with the wedding that we'd planned, but it just really escalated very quickly and um, I was really uh, feeling the pressure from all the appointments that I had planning this wedding and, and the costs that were all adding up and it felt like I was doing it more for our guests than for us. And mm. so, yeah, I think one night after a, an appointment with the decorator or something, I said to Drew, like, <laughs> this isn't what I want anymore. Like, I don't why, – why are we spending so much money on one day? You know, like, this – yeah, it's just ridiculous. Like, <laughs> Yeah, and I was quite happy to hear that. I'm like, well, <laughs> if you don't want to do it, because we're, I'm literally doing this because that's something you would like, you know. You got to, you got to keep the wife happy, everyone. That's a, uh, that's pretty well known, especially before you get married. You know? Yeah, happy wife, happy life. <laughs> yep, yep, definitely learned that one. Um, <laughs> that's not fair to you. You know, it's just you know, you got to keep me happy as well. If I'm not happy, you're not going to be very. You know, it works both ways. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
so I was, oh, well, if you don't want to do that, I don't particularly want to spend that much money on, on a wedding. I'm quite happy just have a nice quiet one with you know, a very select few people. And that's what we ended up doing. So we in a we brought it we brought it way forward from November to March of yeah. twenty twenty one, which was just like I think when we announced to like our you know our parents and close friends, everyone's like, Oh shit, okay. All right. So uh, that was um It was literally I- that night that we made the decision that I'm like, All right, um sidestepping this and <laughs> um, I messaged our photographer and our celebrant because they were the only ones that we'd already sort of booked you know deposits on that we wanted to keep with uh i guess yeah there was the venue for the other place but yeah we lost that money we did (laughs) a thousand bucks but i think in in the scheme of things you know we were a long way ahead (laughs) oh yes absolutely (laughs) Mm. less than half really of what it was going to cost in the end but um Yeah, and then so as soon as we figured out that our photographer and our celebrant were going to be available on this one particular day, we were like, sweet, let's make sure, you know, our our bridal party and our family who were already, you know, invested in in our wedding could make it and um, they all could as well, which was pretty awesome. Um, Stars (laughs) aligned, yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it ended up being a year exactly after what was going to be our engagement party wedding. So, yeah, same same date, just a year later. And, yeah, it was pretty magical really. Like, you know, very sentimental, very <laughs> – it, it felt expensive but it was actually really cheap and it just felt perfect, so. Yeah, so we got married in um, – at our – well, at my parents' uh, family farm – the farm I grew up on. So it was very sentimental to me and, um, you know, just with all the photos and having all our loved ones there. Well, actually, n- not all our loved ones. <laughs> we only had our parents um, and a handful of friends that were our, our groomsmen and brides, yeah, yeah. bridal so party. Yeah, so including us, there was 33 people there in total and our bridal party made up almost half of it. Hmm. <laughs> so yeah it was kind of funny really there wasn't really a lot of people mm. sitting and down for the ceremony <laughs> and how did you go with like the organizing of it like you know getting it together from what you had to what you wanted it to be on a completely different sort of location um i think it all came together pretty well like there were even some last minute things that i kind of threw in too like um the marquee that was sort of I guess, I, yeah, I really planned this whole wedding in less than seven weeks <laughs> mm. from uh, go to woe. And, <laughs> yeah, like even just I think it was two weeks out, I was like, oh, maybe we should put a marquee out there and, you know, just in case the weather's a little bit shit because it was the end of March. Um, but, yeah, no, like it was all really good. We had people helping us out. Um Flowers, you know, we I chose dried and fake so that I could keep them forever. And now they're like all of our house decorations. Yeah, we still got them around <laughs> decorating the yeah. house. And um, even as a bloke, you know, I'm a bloke on, you know, I don't like flowers. But, you know, they look quite nice. It's quite nice having them around. Yeah, yeah. Even our arbor decoration, like um, my dad made our arbor from scratch basically. And then we had it all decorated and, and all that and had um, – you know, my dad's fancy cars and stuff like that in the wedding. And, yeah, it all just sort of came together and mm. it was perfect, really. Yeah, it was. Like, I think, uh, you know, we talked about it that night and, like, you know, did, did you enjoy yourself? Is this what you wanted? You know, i gotta got to ask my wife that because if she says no, oh, shit, you know, you really buck it up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's no do-overs, really. Yeah, but I think we both agree that it's just like a – it was just a – a perfect sort of night, sort of, you know, real intimate out on the farm. You know, the food was great, you know, just, just. Oh, yes, the food. Oh, my gosh, that was amazing. Yeah, you, you got really lucky having a, a great friend that was able to help provide that. Yeah, yeah. One of my bridesmaids, um, she owns a business in Robe and um, I actually did a lot to help them out getting started and so they offered to 
you know, put together our food on the cheap and, you know, we had some amazing Eurosses, so it was pretty good. Yeah, everyone loved them. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my dad was worried because, well, what actually happened is uh, they said they were going to get there and bring like all their equipment and stuff and um, dad was a bit worried about, you know, how they're going to be setting up on their lawn and all of this and I'm like, you know, dad, just don't worry about it. She'll be right. And he was just just fretting about it. I'm like, all right, that's, that's enough. Just sort of don't have to be so worried about it. But what actually happened is like as we're like holding hands up the up the aisle, you know, about to uh, look into each other's eyes and say how much we love each other, this truck just goes pu- past <laughs> and that's them. That's the, that's the Euros crew. Yeah, right in the middle of my vows, wasn't it? They just drove through. Yeah, I'm like <laughs> listening to you like, oh, that's sweet. And I see a boom, like a truck going by and I, was like, I look up just like, Oh yeah, there it is. <laughs> and I'm like sort of half thinking like, is you know, is my old man having a heart attack or <laughs> with uh, what's going on? But he could he wouldn't shut up about how good it was at tea time. He's oh god, they're good Euroses. What well, we know, Dad. We know that's why and uh, that's why we got them because you know not only because they were very nice and provided it for free, uh they're also very good. Yes, yeah, they were very tasty. Yeah. Highly recommend. Give give them a shout out, Chantel. If anyone you know, ten people that might listen to this. Okay. If you go on the robe uh, where, hit up where Food Lab, Food, Food Lab. Lab at Robe. Um, so they do Euros and pizza and I'm pretty sure they've got some other stuff on the menu now as well. But, oh, they're... We're simple. We just like Euros and pizza. So Yeah, can't go wrong. It's always a pizza where you go there. Yeah. Oh, the Diablo pizza, especially the other night. I just <laughs> thought it was going to induce my labour. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, it's a spicy pizza and Chantel's like, well... I'm gonna have it. See if it uh, gets anything moving. <laughs> Spoilers: it 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 got it a did. burps, got a burps <laughs> moving. Not her labor. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and it was so good, though. Yeah, it was. It was very nice. All right, so let's let's talk a little bit about a little bit. Yeah, you know, pregnancy experience, Chantel. I know it's it hasn't been all gummy bears and rainbows, especially since we haven't seen the end of it just yet. Where we're at the end, just about. We're just reaching out towards the pot of gold, um, but we can't quite quite grab it at the time of recording. Yeah, it's like that rabbit in the dog races, isn't it? They Is never it? actually catch it. Oh <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking of like Santa's little helper from The Simpsons, just with a big goofy face with its tongue out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh look, you know, um, from the get go. Um, Oh, it was it was fun to start trying, wasn't it? But <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that, that, that bit's always the the fun part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then yeah, so I basically had a bit of a hunch straight away. Um, mm. When yeah, when you had that feeling and yeah, yeah, even a couple of weeks before I took a test, I'm like, mm, yeah, something's a bit different now. Um, and I reckon I knew basically when I I was doing a workout one. Saturday, I want to say it was, um, <laughs> yep. and I was doing some Bulgarian split squats, which I actually love to do. They're so good. Uh, I think, I think, <laughs> I think everyone who's listening to this just does a lot of Bulgarian split squats. We yep. all do it. We we all love it. <laughs> um, and I just really couldn't handle it this one time, and I'm like, oh, this is weird. Like mm, something's okay. obviously going on. So, like describing it to a man or even a woman or Whoever who hasn't who isn't hasn't been pregnant. What is that? What is that feeling that makes it feel different? Um, you can't really pinpoint it. Mm, like I assume you couldn't. Yeah, but. I was. For me, at that point, I was just really fatigued. Like I didn't have the strength and the energy to be able to train as intensely as I normally did, and. Um, yeah, so – and it was obviously going to be too early to have a, a test show up. So I waited a little bit longer and, um, yeah, so actually the day after my trainee quit on me <laughs> out of the blue. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> um, which really messed things around for me at the business a little bit. Um, I took the test and it was positive. And so I came back into Drew, who was, ah, uh, you you weren't asleep, but I did kind of, you know, shake you up a little bit. And you woke me up. Uh, <laughs> I, I can't remember at all. I, I remember being out in the lounge rooms, but I don't remember being in bed. But I assume if I was in bed, 
it would have uh, woken me up. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, it was that one morning that week that I wasn't having to be at work at 6 a.m. So I thought that was a good day to take it. Mm-hmm. It was a Tuesday. Um, you remember the day, do I you? do, yes. Yeah. yeah, I was very excited. Um, and, uh, yeah, so we were pregnant, had some kisses and cuddles, and then I went to work. And a couple of days mm-hmm. later, I want to say, the um, – the morning sickness really hit me pretty hard and you know as anyone who has been through it and knows what morning sickness is like it's never just in the morning is it so (laughs) (laughs) um it wasn't really something that I could hide too well at work so everyone all my clients without me having to tell them just sort of knew something was up from the very start. Yeah. So I guess just for a bit of context, Chantel's a personal trainer. She runs her own, own classes and that in the in her gym. Yeah, yeah. And um, So she's very close with her clients and that and they, they yeah, can tell some, something's going on. <laughs> they're my family and they've sort of been through it all, you know, from the very start basically. Like, yeah, just – and having them all know sort of takes the pressure off too. Like they were all very understanding when I'd be like, all right, so you're going to do this and this and this and uh, I'll see you in a minute because I'm just going to go vomit in the toilet. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, okay. All right. So God, Chantel must eat a lot of uh, <laughs> off Mexican food. She's going to the toilet a lot. Yeah. So um, it was, yeah, finding out pretty pretty early on. You know, I felt like it was such a a long hill to get to twelve weeks to finally be able to announce it. Yeah, because like for me, it's just like oh, you know, don't have to, <laughs> don't have to, you know, don't have to announce it too early, Chantel. Hold, hold on to the secret. Be like, well, it's easy for you. you. You get around. You don't obviously no difference with you, but with with you, you're throwing up. You might be, I don't know, showing a bit or whatever. Whatever the case is, it's like well. Easy for you, drama. Yeah, well, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. I I found it just really hard to hide it in general. Like, um, you know, I had had to get a new photo on my driver's license, and honestly, like, even just that photo, I'm like, oh my god, you can tell that was first trimester. I look like absolute shit. <laughs> <laughs> Why got chubby cheeks or something or no just like <clears throat> really tired you know mm. wasn't able to sleep and blew under the eyes and just yeah like i don't know the the morning sickness really did a number on me for quite a few weeks mm. oh well it, at least it's not like uh like you got your digital license now so you don't have to have your <laughs> driver's license right in the front of your purse every time you open it yeah so i no. guess this is that <laughs> It's just the policeman when you're when you're speeding. That's that's what we notice. Oh, she was pregnant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Then uh, yeah, if it's in the a few months in the future, they'll look in the back and see a baby's. Oh yeah, this must have been taken ten months ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um. And then uh, what happened after that? So not long after <clears throat> the um the morning sickness cleared up. I had probably a couple of weeks where I actually felt pretty good in the start of the second trimester and then my pelvic girdle pain started kicking in. Mm. And, um, yeah, that's it's another one that's really hard to explain, you know, especially if you're not an anatomy-minded. Yeah, so what, <laughs> like, I don't know, what actually is it, like, to explain it for someone that doesn't know what it is? Because I, I, would, I wouldn't necessarily know what it was before. I witnessed you go through it <laughs> so, for, for months. Yeah, so I think my understanding of it is that pelvic girdle pain is just sort of the the blanket terminology for any kind of pain in the pelvis region that happens during pregnancy. So for me, I had um, what felt like some aching and um, just sort of unstable joints through my hips and pelvis so my sacroiliac joint at the basically where your (laughs) your back and your um, pelvis meet um, at the bottom of your spine sort of area Um, also the pubic bone that 
that pain, especially the last, oh, last couple of months has been just excruciating. It kind of feels like um, my whole pubic bone is just like snapping in half every time I move my hips in a different way and, and, and stuff like that. Like I've really had to rely on Drew to help me get out of bed <laughs> or mm. turn over in bed or something like that. Otherwise, you know, it all clunks and... It's hard to, it's hard to sort of, uh, <laughs> you know, watch... Uh, you know, your loved one go through that because like say if we were like, you know, trying to tip just a, a, even the process of like, all right, I'm sick of this side. Let's move to the other side. Like you're doing bed, you're always moving about and like, all right. So that's like a big process to like rotate her around. <laughs> and then like if, if you do it a bit wrong or it's a bit more severe, like you just he- hear like something in a hip just a crunk. Like it yeah. sounds, it sounds awful, let alone the actual feeling of it. I can actually make a similar noise in my shoulder. Oh god! So do you have to? Are you, <laughs> do you want to do that into a microphone? Do you really? You have you? You do realize someone's going to be driving to work, and they just hear, <laughs> the, the the car stereo is going to be turned up, and you just hear like this big clunk. So you know, really think about what you're doing there, Chantel. I hate it. So and I'm wearing, <laughs> I'm monitoring our sound with headphones. So she's going to do it. I don't know how well that picked up, but. That, that'll do. All right. <laughs> I don't know how much closer you're going to get to the microphone. <laughs> so, yeah, that's that's awful. Yeah, yeah. just <laughs> clunky joints and mm. and pretty horrible pain. And, yeah, just, you know, sometimes being in too much pain to be able to walk, like, you know, I couldn't make it up the stairs to to work and stuff like that. So it's it's hard, like, being, you know, I went into this pregnancy thinking I'm young, I'm fit, I'm healthy, like this is just going to be something going on in the background and it's going to be just a breeze. Yeah, you got you got a bit less space, but you can still do (laughs) what you need to do type of thing. Yeah, yeah. And then just, you know, from one thing to another, it's just been like completely debilitating and I wasn't really prepared for how hard the whole experience is going to be, so. Yeah, because like, you know, I think, like as a couple, we can we can say we've been very fortunate as as far as the actual baby. He's gone so far. I don't want to jinx that. I really don't want to jinx that. We haven't given birth to the thing yet. No, <laughs> that's right. And medically, the Me- whole pregnancy has been perfect. Yeah, that, that's that's what I was meaning. Like medically, it's going well. He's like he's tracking uh, how he needs to. It's just like being how um, it's physically affecting you and how much you're struggling and all that. And so. Uh, you know, it's it's difficult. I know, like some women might have the complete opposite. The baby's not going any good, but they're fine. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, everyone's journey is sort of different. I hope just like people listening to this who are either, you know, I guess on the process of maybe thinking about it in the future or right in the middle of it. You know, it's uh, you know, different perspectives might help sort of uh, move things along. Yeah, absolutely. Like it's it's definitely not always going to be a walk in the park for everyone and. Um, mm. you know, the, the history in my family has been very easy births. And so I was under the complete wrong impression that I was going to have an easy pregnancy and, yeah. like and all that. You've so, got, you've got three siblings and your mum was like, yeah, it's easy. Yeah. Yeah. She, even just yesterday, I think it was, she was like, oh, if I had a known, I would have been your surrogate because I just love being pregnant so much. <laughs> I can tell you right now, Chantel. The idea of your mum being a surrogate <laughs> for our baby makes me shiver to my bone. <laughs> yeah, like that's it. Yeah, you, know, you, you get a surrogate. You got to have someone you don't know. I feel like, or someone. I don't know. Maybe it's just a, an adjustment I need to mentally make. But <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah. Well, I think we were just fortunate enough not to have to need a surrogate. Really, of course, of but, course. Yeah, but but if we did, I don't know about my mum. Yeah, that's a bit, a bit much. Yeah, but it's a lovely <laughs> thought, mum. I it's appreciate a lovely it. thought. <laughs> lovely thought. Yeah. So yeah, um, I guess uh, that's sort of how the the journey sort of gone. Like it's just been kind of straightforward, but just real uh, sort of. Hard on your body. Mm. Mm. Yes. <laughs> yes. And the mental struggle as well of of the expectations 
that I put on myself being a a personal trainer and, you know, thinking that I was going to be able to work up until I give birth and um, all that kind of stuff as well and then just it not happening the way that I thought it should or like I'm not able to do what other women are able to do and it's sort of it was hard for me to accept that even though the pregnancy is going well like I'm not able to to be doing what I should kind of thing so yeah it was it was mentally a struggle as well knowing my my history with mental health too so yeah (laughs) Mm. yeah and like it doesn't help that you know, COVID has been a lot more prominent in the last couple of months here in South Australia. And like some of the the rules make it extremely hard to even get into the hospital for a checkup, let alone what happens if you do get COVID and what will happen to <laughs> what will happen to us if, uh, you know, you go and labour at the same time and just yeah. that massive complications as far as, as, that, as, far as that goes. Yeah, is- everyone's been saying like, oh, Omicron's the one that everyone should just get, like let it rip through everyone and... It's, you know, it's not going to be a big deal, but the restrictions that they had in place for pregnant women who end up um, being COVID positive at the end of their pregnancy is just, you know, completely isolating. Like that Mm. potentially I would have had to have been taken to Adelaide to deliver my baby without Drew in the room. So Yeah, which is just, (laughs) which is awful. Like it's awful for both both partners and it's just like, you know, I, I couldn't imagine going through that, like what you're going to go through and just be like not have a support person there. That's uh, it's not really right, is it? Yeah, yeah. It just, you know, so we've we've isolated ourselves to sort of take away that risk a little bit and, mm. um, yeah, it's been hard not having any kind of distractions from what's been going on and, and now I'm overdue and <laughs> sick of it <laughs> and yeah. that's all I can think about is... When's this little baby coming? So, because mm. like uh, I guess as uh, as far as like vaccinations go, like we are, you are double vaccinated. I got my third one a month or so ago, but like we we did come to the decision to get you vaccinated for COVID, even though like you know at first we were a bit wary. We sort of went like you know I I got mine straight away, but you being pregnant, we're like all right, how is this going to affect? Um, you know, potentially affect the baby, and like we, we, I've, we've never been anti-vaxxers or any extreme sort of circumstance like that before. But um, you know, we did come to the you know conclusion that you know I think we are safe to get it, and I think so far, just from our checkups and that, it's probably been the right decision. I feel for us. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you know, having a fear of needles, I wasn't too happy. But <laughs> you can't no. avoid them forever, though, can you? Oh, I know, I know. I hate them too. I can't talk. I'm quite used to um, the good old needle now. Like between all the blood tests and you get you you get you've had some way scarier needles than I've had in my life. Though, <laughs> if I got them too, I'll be like, I'll be probably twice as worse as you. So, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, um, I can be your talk. <laughs> <laughs> Just, you know, like once once you hit that 28 weeks and you have to have your glucose test, I think you, you're a bit over the blood test. You, you know what the drill is and you sort of work out how to handle it a little bit. So, mm. um, yeah, like it's um, – it was definitely something that I, w- I was weighing up for a little while and it – yeah, I do believe it was the, the right choice for us having the – the jab <laughs> having the jab <laughs> yeah um <laughs> i know you know some of my friends have sort of changed their stances on it and have decided not to get the booster and you know like have had some reactions or you know and that's just their personal choice i like mm. i don't judge anyone for their decisions i've got friends who are you know in the exact same boat as me with their pregnancy and they've decided not to to vaccinate until afterwards um and yeah honestly like I don't I don't judge anyone for making those choices for themselves and um yeah I don't know I just yeah <laughs> I, I I yeah I don't blame anyone, anyone else either I just think you need to make a decision that works for you and I think for us just you know 
you know, I guess we, you know, have put a bit of trust into it, but it is good and a little yeah. bit of evidence before has shown that it, it is. And I think, and, you know, at the end of the day, I think if you do catch COVID, I think COVID is going to do worse for you and the baby than the vaccine ever will. So. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, And also, like, at the start of the pregnancy, the doctor was like, ah, oh, I mean, you can have it if you want. And then when... um you know, came out in the news that they were recommending it for pregnant people and he was just like, yeah, all right, so, you know, get get your vaccine. <laughs> that, the doctor, he was, he was all about it. He was like, tell you what, if I could sneak in a fourth or fifth one, I bloody would. He'll would, he would be in the bloody uh, vaccine closet just dosing himself up. He was, yeah. he was loving it. Bloody hell. Imagine all the bloody drugs he gets into, all the good feeling stuff probably. <laughs> oh, I don't know. No, nah, I doubt it. Maybe he actually – maybe he does. Maybe that's why he's so blasé. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we uh, – maybe we won't name our doctor. <laughs> no, we of course we won't name the doctor. <laughs> but, um, yeah, I felt like as soon as I got put onto this obstetrician, um, I didn't really get a lot of choices. I was kind of just told – this is what happens next before your next appointment and this is how it is and – you know, it's just how it is. Yeah, like I'd I'd rock up to an appointment and be like, "All right, hooping cough today," and it's like, "Oh, okay." Yeah. <laughs> and I'm in, I'm at the appointment. I'm like, can I get one too? <laughs> <laughs> so I don't have to come back and organize it myself. I just like sort of tag along. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the hooping cough vaccine. Like, I don't want to scare anyone because a lot of people, most people who have got it and got the vaccine, are like, yeah, it's fine. But it just it fucked me up for three days. Yeah, you Hooping. were pretty sick. I was, in, <laughs> I was in bed. Like it, it just ruined me, mm. and it made you pretty sick too. But obviously not the man flu <laughs> <laughs> symptoms like I got. Yeah, yeah. Oh. So during the pregnancy, I had to get obviously the the flu shot and the whooping cough and um and the first COVID vaccine. And each one of those knocked me around for you know a couple of days. But you sort of you get on with it. And then, <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't. No. Hooping cough. Holy <laughs> shit, I didn't. I had Monday off. I'm like, I can't. Like, we aren't in that another day off. Yeah. Because I got it. We got it Friday, and yeah, had Monday off. So, mm. Mm. it's a fair while. Poor thing. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Give me some sympathy, everyone. I need. I need sympathy. <laughs> and then, um, the yeah. my second COVID vax w- happened. Literally the day after we lost our dog. Yeah, well that was, yeah that's another thing, isn't it? Mm. Which I was actually going to touch on but kind of forgot about. Um, or didn't forget about it but forgot about it for this podcast. Yeah, that was probably the, one of the traumatic things that just, uh, you know, set us back a, a long way as far as our way to deal with things during uh, you know, this time. Yeah, it definitely affected my mental health like um, – and obviously yours as well, like we, we both struggled to deal with it. But um, it was a big turning point in the, you know, in the pregnancy. Like that's sort of when I stopped being able to do any kind of working out. And I think just the, the trauma and the stress of that event, you know, really upped the ante on my pain level as well. So mm. it was it was pretty intense. Um, it was a very shocking day like it wasn't she wasn't an old dog it was a it was an accident mm. um and it shouldn't have happened and um yeah we lost our little girl mm. so <laughs> yeah no nah, just uh really sad because she, she was a uh, like it, i was working quite a bit towards the end of last year and uh you know she was your companion and sat, yeah. on, sat, sat, sat on the couch with you and you know I, I don't think we could have loved that dog anymore and I'm, I'm glad that we showed it. Yeah, yeah. I spent a lot of quality time with her. Like um, it, <laughs> I think we had daily naps on the couch and she would just like snuggle in around my growing belly and, mm. you know, you, she'd put her paw up on my belly and you sort of know that she knew and, you know, we are very excited for, for her to be able to meet our son. Yeah, because I, I – she, she, she was a, a Jack Russell and, you know, I, I grew up with Jack Russells and I couldn't wait for 
my son to have the you know the same sort of experience with her and I knew that you know she'll be good around kids and uh yeah and that was one of the one of the first things I said was just like you know he's not gonna he's not gonna meet her yeah which was one of the most sort of heartbreaking things I had to had to come to terms with yeah yeah I think um like you know just how it all happened you watching it all unfold and I sort of I heard what was going on from inside the house and I came running out and you know it was hard to tell the extent of the injuries of you know how how she sort of got hit by a car Mm. um and so, you know, the neighbours that were all outside already, like they had kids playing out in the yard, the front yards. And, um, you know, so all the neighbours came over and they were trying to get a hold of the vet on a Sunday. Um, and it was just, you know, the vet, it, like that, he was never going to make it out to no, us. It um, happened in about two minutes. Yeah. yeah. You know, sort of. Well, it wasn't. I don't. I think it was a bit longer than two minutes. <laughs> but oh, under five. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it was still a long time to be watching such a little dog suffer. Um, and yeah, like you were sort of holding her from behind, and I was laying in front of her, and you know, watching the life leave her eyes. Like it was pretty. Mm. It was pretty horrible. Yeah. No, it was definitely a. It was definitely a rattling experience and, you know, hopefully like, hopefully it doesn't affect the uh, the baby too much, just like with the, you know, the trauma you went through. I don't know. I don't know how scientifically that sort of works in the body. But hopefully not. Yeah. Look, um, it didn't take me long to realise that I needed to, to, to speak to someone. So I did have an appointment with a psychologist mm-hmm. um, and... Yeah, like obviously being pretty isolated kind of from that point onwards as well. Like it was sort of all I thought about and I didn't think I was moving on yeah. very quick. Because let's, let's be honest, when when I go back to work, you just have the bloody cat. Like, you know, <laughs> yeah. We, we, we can have this debate, you know, what's, are you a cat person or a dog person? Look, as, as far as our household, our household goes, the cat sucks. Like, you know. We feed her. She's. You know, I look at so our cat's name's Nala. Like probably ninety percent of the cats in Australia. <laughs> um, it's like, hey Nala, how you going? Well, I want some food. Cool. Give her a pat. She sits on your lap. Maybe five minutes. She's like, oh, I got something else I want to do. She wants to go outside. Then at three o'clock in the morning, her and all her cat mates are just howling at the front door. Wake me up. <laughs> so you know, I, I love I love my cat, but it's not a dog. <laughs> No, that's right. <laughs> it's just not. I hope she, I hope she didn't hear that. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I think uh, from the experience for me, like, you know, going into it, I was like, I'm, you know, I'm ready to be a dad, I'm confident, whatever. But I think, uh, you know, how quickly things change from a, a casual Sunday to just one of the worst days of my life just like really rattled me as far as becoming a father goes. And uh, like you know, I, I I'm a I'm you know a bit more far removed from it now. I'm not as rattled, but it definitely goes to show like you know you, what you hear about being a parent. You've always you know it's what you hear about being a parent all the time. You've always got to be turned on. Can't turn away for a second. Yeah, you don't yeah. have to be turned on. <laughs> <laughs> People know what I meant. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Switch, switch Switched on. on, not turned on. Don't, yeah. You'd have to be yeah, aroused. Don't, don't be turned on around the kids. Please. Don't be aroused around your kids. All right. That's uh <laughs> do it in your free time. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah, it definitely uh, you know, rattled me a bit. Been like, you know, I had this little thing I've got to look after, now I'm gonna have another thing I look after, and that's gonna be a lot more work. <laughs> so, oh, so, yeah. I don't know. Lila was was pretty hard work sometimes. Uh, yeah, she was. But you can just go, all right, out the back door. <laughs> yeah, and then and then she started getting out the back fence and playing with the cows. <laughs> yeah, no, she likes barking at the cows and the sheep. Yeah, yeah, no, definitely love that dog. Mm. We we miss her, don't we? 
Very much, yeah. Not quite ready for, you know, to to go through the whole puppy stage again with a newborn. So it might be a little while before we have another one. But mm. I think a human being might be a yeah, a, might be a, enough, enough, yeah. enough for a bit. Yeah, yeah. Not as fl- <laughs> are they as are they as fluffy and cute as a baby though? Like, what what's cuter, a dog or a human? I feel like a dog is. A dog still beats people as cuteness goes. Oh, I don't know. Mm. Don't know. I, I no, I can't confirm yet. I haven't had her own yet. Yeah, but, uh, dogs. I don't know. They're bloody cute. I haven't seen many babies where I'm like. Oh, but a dog, I'm like, you know, every, it has to be a pretty ugly dog not to get that reaction out of me. <laughs> Especially as a puppy. Yeah, as a puppy. Yeah. Well, you know. <laughs> I was I was almost going to say I think a, a, a human, like a, a baby over a puppy would, would probably smell better, but I'm, I'm not too sure about that either. Mm. <laughs> Who knows? We, uh, we'll, we'll confirm afterwards. Well, the thing is with a puppy – as if it's just like walking around, it does its poo and a wee and it walks away from it. Yeah. <laughs> a baby is just like, it's stuck with it. Where, even if it doesn't have a diaper on, it's going to make a mess, you know? Even if you just let it free ball around the house, it's going to still get it on it. Yeah, true. <laughs> <laughs> You're thinking about it. Yeah, yeah true. Yeah. <laughs> hmm. well, <laughs> let's start wrapping things up. So, you know, we're day potentially days before... Given birth. Yeah, currently 40 weeks and two days. And two so days. any day now. Any day. And they say that being a parent is just, uh, you know, having so many good intentions and trying to meet at least some of them. So how do you think you'll be being a mum? How do you – are you confident? Are you sort of a bit nervous? You don't know what to expect? I, I assume I know how you feel because I'm in the same boat. But um, just to sort of talk through it. Yeah, look, I think um, I've got a lot of friends who are in a similar um, stage of life to me. So I've got a lot of, you know, support, you know, it definitely I've got my village around me. So I'm feeling pretty confident that, you know, we'll, we'll manage. <laughs> we'll have the support that we need and, and stuff like that. But as far as, you know, being qualified to have a child um <laughs> qualified yeah we're not qualified yeah um we haven't got the certificate yeah mm. <laughs> i'm sure well that'd be a birth certificate wouldn't it <laughs> yeah um yeah i don't know i feel like you know no one's perfect you're, you're always gonna fuck your kid up in some kind of way aren't you so mm. um i think as long as you got the right intentions and and just do the best job that you can you know like that's that's what I want to do is just, you know, yeah. We'll always have good intentions. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Like just, you know, lead by example and, you know, hope that our kid ends up being a, a, a good kid, mm. you know. Yeah. So you hear the stories, you know, like, you know, it turns out you, your kid's a bully and you, know, you get a letter from the principal. You're like, oh, really? Like, you know, <laughs> that, you know, it's. Because you, you always just want to pass on to your kid, like, you know, th- these are the lessons I've learnt. Put them on, put them on to you. But, like, you know, the lessons your parents try to put on to you, you're like, oh, shut up, mum. <laughs> <laughs> Dad, what do you know? You're old. <laughs> it's like, well, you know, they know quite a bit. And I try, you know, I try to open myself up to what they're saying, like, you know, my parents. And, uh, you know, so sometimes, you know, we're just different people and we don't agree. That's fine. But you, know, you try and at least take it in. And I wish, you know, <laughs> Your five-year-old kid would be the same mindset. Just be like, you know what? He's he's 35 years old. He might know a little bit more than me. Um, I can disagree with it, but I'll at least listen. I don't know if you get that kind of maturity and forethought out of a five-year-old. Of course not. That's what I mean. Like, it's just like, you, you know, you wish that, you know, you were potentially like that when you were young. But I don't know. <laughs> he's just looking at me about like, what the hell? Yeah. Because like... Um, I think I think the thing I want to put on to our son, at least the most, is just, you know, I think being curious is just what leads to being knowledgeable. And, like, I think, like, a lot of people that come across smart aren't necessarily because they, they are smart. They're just curious and they've learnt a lot through their curiosity. Yeah. So that's something I want to put on because, uh, you know, I'm, you know, 
I wish I took in sort of more things as I was growing up. No, I did a few things, but I don't know. Yeah, um, I kind of agree there. Like I'd, I never want to shut down any kind of opportunities for our kid. Um, just, you know, let let him have his adventures and let him decide what he wants to have a crack at. You know, we've got a lot of people who turn around and say, oh, you better get him into footy or, or something like that. And it's like, well, you know, let, maybe we'll give him like – give it a shot and if he's not interested we're not going to force it and you know like with with your soccer and my taekwondo and your podcasting and gaming and my gym you know it it doesn't necessarily mean he's going to be into any of those things and we just got to let him figure shit out for himself and and just try and hope that he's a a good kid with good values and knows how to treat people right yeah yeah i agree doesn't matter if they're into football or being a ballerina or producing uh, lights for a lighting company. I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> what, Anything. Yeah. As, as long as you're not uh, hurting people, selling drugs, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, don't do drugs, kids. Yeah, don't do drugs, kids. <laughs> and uh, not even not even the, the fun ones. <laughs> uh, so I think that, that uh, pretty much brings us to the end, Chantel. So you're, you're a bit nervous at the start. Have you loosened up a bit? Well, you're still, you're still tense, eh? Yeah, I'm still a bit tense. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hard talking to your husband, isn't it? So hard. Mm. Yeah. Don't blame you. Yeah. Yeah. Just, I just don't even know who you are. No, I'm joking. <laughs> we're going to turn off We're gonna turn off this microphone now <laughs> and then it's going to be like, all right, that's enough. I'm not talking to you for another day. We yeah. don't actually talk outside of this, do we? No, not at all. No. <laughs> well, Chantel, I really appreciate you uh, coming on. I think it was a lot of fun. If you ever want to come in this room again and talk into that microphone, you're more than welcome. Oh, thanks, you reckon babe. You, you, could, <laughs> you reckon you should just like get the nerves to do it again? Please. Yeah, all right. All right. Everybody, uh, <laughs> I'll see you later. Bye. All right, there's been uh, a lot that's happened since that conversation with Chantelle and I. Basically, the, the next day is when we went into the hospital and – Chantel, she, you know, she felt some contractions as we went in basically to our appointment, but <laughs> she didn't actually tell me. So when we went in like halfway there, she's like, oh, I'm actually feeling some contractions. And I, th- I think she didn't want to tell me because she didn't want to, <laughs> didn't want to jinx it or something. Because like with the contractions, they, they can stop, especially if you're traveling and uh, you know, and, and, and anything like that to interrupt it. So I shouldn't really want to <laughs> to uh, interrupt it by, or jinx it by telling me. But when we got in there, we got a uh, stretch and sweep, and the uh, the midwife said to us like very much, uh, you know, it could be any time now, any time today. So don't go too far away from the hospital, since we were about we're about 30, 40 minutes away from the hospital, uh, basically in the next town. So we sat around, we had lunch in the park, and uh, waited around until we thought the time was right to go back in and. About three o'clock in the afternoon, we went back to the hospital and uh, hung around for a bit and, you know, things were progressing. Chantelle was uh, three centimeters dilated um, and we were basically, yeah, progressing and doing, helping with like uh, different positions and stuff uh, on like the fit ball and all of that to try and get things progressing, get get our little little son out. But, um, you know, it, it turned out to be one of the most... Um, you know, the, the longest night I've ever had in my whole life. Um, and that's from me being the man. I could only imagine what it's like for Chantel, but just uh, watching it all happen and trying to be the support person, but not having uh, a whole lot of control of what happens, just being there for Chantel and helping out as, as much as I can to, to help it go forward. But what ended up happening is uh, Chantel, she got to the point when she was in just way way too much pain so we're looking into pain relief and luckily we did some classes that actually went through some pain relief methods uh we started off doing like just gas with like a bit of a gas mask on and inhaling gas and uh that wasn't quite enough it sort of uh, at this point Chantel was she was hyperventilating so uh you know she'll take in too much gas it will knock her out then she'll wake up and she'll be in pain again so that wasn't helping um so eventually we went with the epidural which uh is basically like a big long needle that injects uh, um, drugs into into her spine and just numbs everything. Uh, and it's it's just amazing watching how 
modern medicine works. It's just really, really, really thankful for everything that the midwives and the doctors and everyone that's much smarter than me is uh, able to able to do because I don't know what it would have been like without that. I went from being one of the most scariest and uh, you know I guess horrific things, uh, seeing like my partner in so much pain, but then. You know, once the epidural went in and it did its thing, it, sort of, it numbed her whole body to the point where she couldn't get out of bed. But um, she was just, she was laying there. She was happy. <laughs> it looked nice and calm. And it was like that for a, a couple of hours. It was just like, ah, a nice, simple night in bed. <laughs> Nothing too much going on. And I actually got, I got a photo on my phone just of her laying there, just like, well, these are, all these are tubes and that coming out of it. But she's just happy laying there, peaceful. Um, so... Yeah, that was a that was good after just like uh, a few hours of just really fighting fighting the pain and all that. But um, you know, at that point, I had a bit of a sleep and then then woke up to the midwife basically saying, "Hey, we can't find a heartbeat." And I'm like, "Oh my god!" So I, I got up straight away, just in like the fear of my life, um, and it was it was awful. <laughs> Just waking up to like, hey, we can't find your son's heartbeat. I'm like, oh my God, like the amount of fear that just jolts through your body. Um, and I'm like half asleep, like, oh, you know, trying to help whatever the midwife's doing, trying to push her over to get to the other side, which was, which was, which was something just like on no sleep. Um, and it, and it changed very quickly from there. It, it, it became a bit more of an emergency. So, uh, all the doctors flooded in. This was about six o'clock in the morning at this point, and all the doctors flooded in. Lights come on, stirrups go on, and uh, it was it was very confronting. And then the doctor basically said, "Like, hey, he's facing the wrong way, so we're going to have to get the cup, the suction cup, on his head. So that just allows him to turn the baby's head around a little bit, so it's the right way, so then it can it can come out." And like this was, was all right. This is now or never. And then the pushing started, and uh, basically it came down to the very last push. The doctor said, "Look, it either comes out in this push or it's going to emergency um, surgery for a C-section." So I just like that was. Oh my! Oh my God! Just push, push for the push for your life, Chantel. Make sure you get it out because after all this, you know. It would be good to get it out naturally or without <laughs> wasting all this time. But And then like with that push, I'll, I'll, I'll never forget this. And it's kind of graphic. So uh, <laughs> take out your AirPods if you need to. But uh, I just saw, I just like leant over and I saw the head just rotate. It just like turned like a cave and boom, the rest of the body was out. And my God, my son is uh, he's a big boy. He was 9.7 pounds when he was born. Just absolutely nuts <laughs> and my first reaction to him coming out and uh being in the midwife's arms and then going onto the scales was was just jesus christ <laughs> uh it was um it's a big boy he certainly is and uh you know i i couldn't be any more proud of Chantel and you know, just all the shit she went through and everything from her pregnancy and the birth itself she didn't have fun with any of it but I think we can both agree that it was it was worth it for our, our little boy, and he's uh, almost six six weeks at the time of recording this, so we're a fair bit after the conversation that we had. But yeah, he's just a, a little delight, and for the most part, he's he's pretty he's pretty easy to to look after and all that. He's he's a good boy, but you know, of course, there's lots of challenges with becoming parents and that, and hopefully, you know, Chantel and. Maybe even Lucas, <laughs> if he, if he uh, decides not to scream, uh, can come in here and we'll, we'll talk about it again. We'll do like a bit of a check-in on a Drew story every now and again, just like, you know, what it's like being parents at six months and a year and you know, keep on keep on like recording it and uh, making this podcast something I can look back on. And maybe even other parents out there who are going through similar things can use this and, um, you know, maybe be able to relate or, you know, because it... I feel like it from the first couple of weeks it has gotten easier, which is good. Which is good. But yeah, I'm very, very proud of uh, Chantel and um, just so so much respect. Like I had so much respect for for women before, but 
they are way tougher than men. <laughs> I can tell you that when it comes to uh, childbirth and everything that's involved. Like, you know, a man can be like, <laughs> you might be a high schooler. You might be like, yeah, I'm a big tough boy and all the girls are weak. And, oh. No, man. No. <laughs> The women definitely, definitely uh, put up with a lot more than we do and we just got to make sure we can do the best and be as useful and as kind and as caring as we can possibly be to make sure that we can do as much for our kids and our partners and our family as possible. And uh, that's that's my main goal, um, just be an awesome father, an awesome husband and uh, go to work, make sure I can pay for everything and look after everyone and do my podcasting and my hobbies, whether it's soccer or fitness or video games, just make sure my mental health is in a good place so I can be all of those things. So, yeah, that's a, that's a bit of the update afterwards. We're going to go into a lot more at another point whenever I can convince Chantel to sit in this seat again. But uh, until next time, guys, thank you very much for listening to a Drew story. Very much appreciate it. If you want to be on the show, uh, give me a bit of a hoy hoy over at Twitter doc. <laughs> what do I say? Twitter dot com uh, at idruby on Twitter or Instagram. Either of those two platforms would do. And uh, until next time, guys, we'll catch you later. You'll be all right, Chantel. You'll be all right, mate. You're here. You sat in front of the microphone, feeling a bit nervous. Yeah, very nervous. You shouldn't be nervous. A Drew story is lovingly crafted and recorded in the southeast of South Australia. The show is produced and hosted by me, Drew Agnew. If you enjoy my work here and on my other podcasts, The House of Mario, Encore at The House of Mario and Kraken Furfies, help spread the word by sharing us with a mate or leaving a five-star review on Apple Podcasts and Spotify. If you'd like to show further support and help me achieve my goal of freeing up one working day a week to spend more time refining and creating podcasts, please consider checking out patreon.com slash idruby where for only $1, you get access to my secret recordings where I share everything behind the scenes. A big thank you to the legend DJ for supporting the content at the podcast producer level on Patreon. From the bottom of my heart, thank you.